Hello and welcome back to the OTB channel. This is the first of what I hope will become a new series of quick fixes. I don't currently have any uh, agenda in front of me. I thought what I would do is, as I come across various problems and uncover fixes for them, I'll produce a quick video showing you what I did. So this is the first one. Let's go. Let's see what I've done. So you'll see in front of uh, you my copy of VirtualBox and some of you may have uh, seen me doing an installation of uh, Debian 10 last week and setting it up on an EFI system. Well, it worked fine after the installation and rebooted immediately into my new Debian system. What I found after though when I was doing some customization is that it failed to boot and what I got was an error screen and let me show you what I saw and there you have it let me just scale this so you can see it better okay so this is the EFI shell that has booted and apparently the problem is with VirtualBox Although after you've done an installation, having selected the EFI option, it will remember where the bootloader is on the first boot. But after that, it tends to forget it, unfortunately. But if you get into this screen, the first thing to do is to avoid panicking. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the operating system. You would simply type fs0 and colon and then type lis ls and you will see there's a number of directories there including an efi directory so cd into that efi directory do an ls again and you'll see we see a boot directory there and a debian directory Let's move into the Debian directory. Do an LS again. And now you can see that we actually have our bootloader there, grubx64.efi. So to launch the system, all we need to do is to type that. grubx64.efi. And we're straight into the grub screen. But is there a way to fix this permanently? Well, yes, there is, luckily. I'm going to talk about that now. It's a relatively simple process, then, if you uh, do get this shell when you boot your system, to simply navigate to your bootloader and to launch it manually. But that's a bit of a nuisance, and there is a workaround. You'll see on this screen that the system is searching for a file called startup.nsh. Well, let's see if it's there. If we type fs0 colon again and issue ls, no, it isn't there. What you'll actually see is the remains of one I made earlier. So what we have to do is we have to create a startup.nsh file. And the way that we do this in the EFI shell is simply to type edit startup.nsh. And you'll see you get a little editor that looks slightly like nano. What you need to put in this file is first of all fs0 colon. And then you simply repeat the commands that you would have typed to manually launch the system. So cd efi, cd debian, and then launch the bootloader. We now need to save that. And to save it in the EFI editor, you type or rather you press control s and return and to quit control q to reboot and see if it works 
We type reset and let's see what happens. We've got uh, a countdown there to it looking at the EFI shell and hello NSH, startup NSH seems to have worked. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut this virtual machine down so we're not just rebooting and test it again to make sure it works when we boot up from cold. So here's the test then. I've shut the machine down completely. I'm going to hit start in a minute. And what I want to see if it goes straight to the EFI shell is the countdown prior to looking at startup.nsh and then it should boot straight into Grub. Fingers crossed. Three, two, one, go. And yes, it's successful. And that's it. I'm sure some of you will have noticed that uh, I actually put each command in the startup NSH file rather than just doing uh, backslash EFI, backslash um, Debian backslash GrubX64. Unfortunately, I found that in the EFI shell, my backslash key didn't work. So it was easier to do it this way. I also tried to uh, edit the startup.nsh file when the system was running. And unfortunately, that didn't work either. So it's a little bit of a crude mix, but it does work. I have to say though, VirtualBox UEFI is not new. Please sort this out. I understand that you tend to boot in standard DOS mode by default, and for most purposes that's fine, but if somebody actually wants to test an installation in VirtualBox before they uh, install onto a hard drive, they want to use the EFI system. So please, Get on with it and fix it. But in the meantime, this little hack works. Until next week, guys, thanks very much for watching and stay well, YouTube.